In this video, I will take you on an art photography project here at our house. This is our entry hall. We have five meter huge walls, but the walls are white. And white for me is always boring. I like colorful rooms and walls, or at least some paintings or pictures. I'm a creative person and I'm a photographer, so what I always dreamed of is kind of a private gallery with all my best shots of the past years but also of the future years. So it should be a bit flexible as well. This project is a lot of work and in this video I will guide you through the steps of planning and organizing all the frames, then print and choose all the photos and then hang and final frame all the images here on the wall. So I'm really looking forward how that empty white wall will look afterwards and you will see at the end of the video. Let's go! As a photographer I had many exhibitions in the past and I always dreamt of having my own public gallery accessible for everyone. And that might be a project that I will do in the future. But for now this is a private gallery. You can say my own trophy gallery. Because photography is kind of a trophy hunt. You get the shot and you want to hang the shot on the wall without killing of course anyone or any animal. But I want to look at the image and remember that special moment, that maybe mood, that situation that I experienced while capturing the image. But at the same time I want to stay flexible because in the future I might take amazing shots as well that I want to change over time on my trophy wall. So the whole trophy wall should be kind of yeah, flexible you can say. So I thought of hmm, what material should I print on my images? Maybe alu dibond, maybe canvas, that's what I used in the past. But for this project I do something else, because I like frames, I like old paintings. I have many old paintings and newer paintings, I paint myself as well. And in painting the frame always belongs kind of to the image. So you choose the frame next to the image, what fits together. So I thought about that in photography as well and I choose a simple black frame with a white Passepartout. Passepartout is French and is actually that white paper strip you can say in the frame. But with that combination, black, very simple lines, very clean, very modern, but also traditional you can say, so it's timeless actually, um, fits to every image. Landscape shots, colorful, black and white, portrait, animal maybe, everything fits in that frame. And what I do in the printing process later, I will just print on paper. So not on canvas, not on alu dibond, it's much more expensive in um, bigger sizes, but I do it on simple paper and put the paper later in the frame. And I can change and access everything very easy over the next years. But the first obstacle of course now is to hang all the frames first. Because I now did not choose what pictures, what trophies do I hang on the wall. I will do later, when all the frames are on the wall, different sizes, different maybe angles, portrait, landscape and so on. Then I will choose what image in landscape or portrait, what bigger, what smaller do I hang on the wall. So let's go with the first step, the whole organizing and planning. And it will be complicated, because the walls are high. But let's go! We installed the whole construction platform here. It was quite a mess, one and a half hour to put it here at the stair. And it doesn't have the right size, it's too big. And the distance here is also not high enough, or the stairs are not high enough, don't know. So what we did now, we used those mats here uh, from my gym in the garage. And I have it now to support and also for better grip. Now the whole construction is on that, also it protects the wooden uh, stair from that aluminium here. So I think that works 
And now we go up there, or I go up there, and David is, you can say, my weight support on that side. I climb up here or the other way around. I'm on top of the ladder now, and uh, yeah, it's quite shaky and <laughs> a bit frightening. It's not that high, it's maybe three meters, but when you fall down, yeah, it will hurt definitely on that hard ground. Uh, we start in the corner and try to align the corner and that one line here with the level, very straight. And then after that, we go from there to the other parts. Um, and do not start in the middle because otherwise, at the corners, it might be difficult. So we start at the corners and then go in the middle. But first, let's go down again. I have a total of 43 frames now in different sizes. This is the biggest size, it's 70 by 100. This is a bit smaller. And this is the, you can say, regular size, pretty good size. We have the most um, of that size and then a bit of smaller frames to just fill up the gaps you can say. It's totally possible that those are not enough but I calculated and measured everything so it should be okay but as usual when we do some construction we don't have enough material. All right we got the first frames hanging and I already have some learnings I want to share with you. Can you uh, hand me the frame? As you can see we have here some markings, some crap and on this little paper here we have a line and this is exactly the middle of the whole frame and with this you can perfectly set yourself a point and then put your marker where you have to drill a hole. And there we have a level with a laser and it gives me perfect the alignment here of the frames and because the frame is always the same size and I have my screw just below here that black thing on the back side it's always the same height so it's very easy to then put everything. The architecture of the entry hall is a little bit weird because we have a curved edge here. So it's not like this, but curved. And not only normal curved, but like this. That's why we have many small images here and we'll even put some smaller images here where the biggest part of the curve is. And then you can see it in this part here where it's straight again, we can put bigger frames. From up here it's already beautiful, beautiful. Really like it. All right, we are done. Almost at least some empty spots are left but they are all the same size and we put some screws already in so we just need to buy some new frames and put them in between and what we learned we need more of the 40 by 50 and we needed less of 50 by 70 centimeters and what i would recommend you is to get only 100 by 70 centimeter frames then the 40 by 50 centimeter frames and the 50 by 70 centimeter frames and yeah of course some smaller are great as well but with those three sizes you could do almost everything because they can be divided by each other in size it looks amazing doesn't it so tomorrow new day Everything is about preparation and we did the whole puzzling with all the frames on the walls in real life and now we have to do everything digital. I took two photos, one from the side and one from the front. So every frame I have now visible in two images. And what I do now in Photoshop, I want to have a look and feel, you can say, how all the images harmonize with each other. And of course, I want to see what image do I take in what size, because that is important later 
for the order process. So first I need to have a folder with all my favorite photos I want maybe to be printed. So I already prepared that folder now and what I do next is I open Photoshop, I pulled the two photos inside with all the frames on the wall and now I use that little tool here. And most people don't even know that that tool exists, but it's a great tool in Photoshop. It's that square with an X inside. I now just pull that square with the X over the area where I want the picture later to appear on the frame. Now there's the square. And what I do now on the Mac, I don't know if it works the same on a PC uh, or on a Windows computer, you can write in the comments below. On the Mac, I just take the folder, I just take the image I want to have here, uh, in this example a portrait mode photo, and I just drag it onto that square with the X and tick, that's it. Now it's on the frame. Totally easy. And I can even adjust it. I can pull it to the left, to the right, a bit up, a bit down, uh, depending what format I choose. And now I do it with every frame here on the wall. So I take that square with the X, tack, tack, on every frame here. And when everything is prepared, I just go back in the folder where all my images are, and now just simply drag them, tack, on the frames, tack, on the frames, tack, on the frames. And now I can see, oh, that image looks great with that image, or this image is not that great, maybe in that size, maybe a little smaller size, or this image maybe in a bigger size. That is now the actual work. Okay, this whole process now took me maybe one hour and I think I have all the photos ready. But I'm not done. What I do now, I need to have the proper sizes and I do different folders with the sizes of the picture I need later to print and now I have to drag all the full resolution images in the folders with the right size so that later when I have the order process I can just choose from that folder that size, next folder that size, next folder that size. So I need to concentrate now because this work now is very important that I don't make a mistake when I order later. Important information, of course I only take the size in the passepartout and not the whole frame size because I don't print in the whole frame size only the size of the passepartout. I could do it, I could print a bigger image but that costs a lot more and I don't need the other size because um, I have the passepartout. But a good tip, if you don't have a passepartout, you can of course print your image in Photoshop, you can uh, set everything right that you have for example a white frame like a passepartout. But then again you need to print in a bigger size. And I avoid that now, I print the size in the passepartout, so check for that size if you want to do the same. A lot of people ask me where do I print my images and what company can I maybe recommend. It totally depends what I print because I did many books in the past, I did posters, I did calendars, I did postcards, I did uh, almost everything, Alu Dibond, uh, Canvas and it depends what you want then I look for experts you can say or sometimes uh, companies that can do that specific thing on a budget as well depending on the project and the budget of course. And what I choose now here for this project is poster because I want everything to be in a frame so I don't need Alu Dibond or anything, I don't need canvas, I don't need expensive materials, I just need simple poster prints and I want to change those prints over the next couple of years. That's what I know now, that's why I spent more money on the frames than I spent on the actual prints. And you will see later that it's not that expensive to do all of those prints. And the company that I work with now for this project is Saal Digital or Saal Digital in English. It's actually a German company but they sell their print products all over the world, also to the US, all over Europe. What I would definitely recommend you is to order yourself a sample pack. This pack here for example I think it costs 10 euro, maybe it's 10 dollar as well, and you can get the value from the 10 euro or dollar um, to your next order added, so actually it's for free. And you have all the different uh, papers available, 
here in one sample pack. And you can just look in the light how the different papers behave with the light because the one is more metallic, the other is more matte, the other is more silky, the other is more um, glossy, some have more texture, you can actually hear it and some have not. And you just have to decide for yourself what you like. And you also get those here, Alu Debond, uh, or this for example is pretty interesting for black and white, brush metal print, and you can yeah, choose whatever you want for your project, and it's good to have something like this at your home to decide what you want to print. And I, for myself, like to keep it simple, and for this project here, because I have the frames, because there's a glass in front of the frame, I have the passepartout, I don't want a super thin paper, but I don't need a super thick paper as well, and I don't like that super structured paper. Some people love it, but I don't like it for my pictures. So I choose a very simple paper. It's a matte paper, so no glossy paper, but matte paper, but simple poster print in matte. Actually, it's a Fuji print uh, or Fuji paper, um, but matte. That is important now for the prints I choose. I opened now the Saal Digital website here in my browser. And if you want to order some prints yourself, wait until the end of the video. I have a coupon code for you. You can download a software to your computer or you can do everything in the browser because I'm lazy, I do everything in the browser. I created myself an account and that is good because you can see all your orders and you have all the images in one place. And now I will choose the uh, print, the material I want to do the prints on. Then I choose the simple photo poster and now I upload the images. And I take now first the images from uh, my folder with the big image sizes. So those I choose first, but it doesn't actually matter. Important is that you don't mix <laughs> the different images. That's why I have the folders. First, I choose the format and the size. In my case, it's 50 by 70 centimeter. If you are from the US, you will choose it in inches, but it should look um, the same only with different numbers. And depending on your project, you will have a different size anyway. Then I choose the surface. In my case, it's photo paper in matte. And then I choose a frame. I don't want a frame. And I don't want to have any processing or any image editing done by a software um, or done automatically. I don't want it. So tick that definitely off. Because if you are a photographer and if you already edited your images, you don't want to have any additional image editing. Because if you have like a dark image of a Milky Way, it might be a bright image later. Because the software thinks it's too dark. Maybe. I always tick it off. Okay, and now comes the next step. Um, because the format is different than the original image format, I need to adjust that and to crop it. And also here with the panorama image, I need to adjust it more to the middle. And what I see now here with that mosque is that the tower on the right side is not aligned properly. It's a bit bended. So this is an image uh, which is not the right image. I have it definitely with straightened uh, towers because I can't remember how I did that. So it must be somewhere on my computer and this is the wrong version. That is good that you see now every image in a bigger size again. You can do it of course <laughs> earlier than uh, after the upload, but now's the last moment to make a proof, you can say, and to check everything or make a double check of everything. So I note this now and I will change the image later. I will do the other crops now adjust all the images. And if you have an image which is very, very, very dark and it should not be that dark, then I would recommend to make it a bit brighter because usually in print, everything which is dark is a bit too dark, depending on the material you print on. But canvas is the worst. On canvas, you have to make everything a bit brighter. On paper, it's okay, but it's depending on the paper. And um, the paper that I use now is matte and it doesn't soak that much of paint, but I would recommend to not print too dark images or definitely I would not recommend to edit images in a dark area at night or anything without an artificial light or anything. So better make the image a bit brighter than too dark but not let the software automatically uh, edit your images. Okay, now comes the next image size. So it's now a size smaller. I will choose again, 40 by 50 it's now, photo paper matte, no frame, no editing, and make all the crops now, and done. 
Now everything is in the checkout and I have here now 259 euro. And that is totally okay if you think about how many images I print now. I put two walls full of images. I have bigger sizes on it and 259. That is the poster because it's only poster. It's no expensive Alu D-Bond. It's no acrylic. Um, it's just simple poster. And I can easily replace one or the other image next year, the year after and so on. So I think it's a good idea for this project to do everything only with poster prints. And if you want to do some prints as well and want to order your photos, then wait until the end of the video because I have a coupon code for you for Saal Digital where you can save some big money at the end of the video. All right, I will order now and now we have to wait for the delivery man and I'm looking forward to the prints. It's the final day and now the empty frames will get the beautiful images. Here behind me is the package I received. It took about three days, then everything was here already printed at my home address. It's that big, that thin, and I already opened it. It looks beautiful. Now the whole Photoshop preview helps me. I just uh, put a screenshot on my phone that I can see exactly what frame will get what image. And I will start now with the lower frames. I can do them myself and later my wife will help me with the higher frames. And I also got a new ladder, a very big one that I can put here on the stair. And I also was at Ikea a second time and bought more frames because I wanted to fill some of the empty gaps. I'm very curious how it will look in real life with everything filled. The first image is on the wall, now comes the second one and I will explain a little bit. First of all, I have gloves on. Not only do they look very professional, they are very handy because not only on the wall you avoid have your fat fingers on the white wall, also here you have a plexiglass here in the front and there are two layers of that plastic on it. And when you want to pull it off, you will definitely have your fat fingers on that plexiglass and you don't want that. That's why I wear gloves all the time. Also, I have here a blanket and that is very helpful. I didn't have it on the first one and it was a big mistake because now I have a small tiny scratch in the plexiglass and you can definitely avoid it by having a blanket underneath. And I just changed clothing because it's so freaking hot right now. First of all, you have to get rid of all the plastic around it and also those corner protection here. And then you see those little things here. I have just a simple knife, not very sharp, but perfect to bend these little black things here. And you can do it with your fingers, but believe me, after one frame, you definitely want to do something else than your fingers. And I would not use a screwdriver or anything. This is much bigger, much easier to just bend it like this. Also, when you later need to bend everything down, just use a regular knife. You can see that little layer of plastic on it and you can just pull it off. It's a bit tight and it's electrostatic. So you might have a lot of dust on it when the area where you are is pretty dusty. So avoid that in the first place. And also from that pressed wood here, there might be some little spots as well on that plexiglass. So try to keep it clean before you put it back in that frame. I can tell you from my own experience. Now we put the plexiglass back in the frame. Look that everything like here fits. You can just squeeze it a little bit and try to avoid scratches. I just think I did a scratch here, but I'm, I'm not pretty sure. So try to keep them as open as possible. All right, just like this. Next we take the passepartout and look for that little edge here, because this edge is the edge you want to see later. So put it down on the plexiglass and this straight edge here, this is the back. Now comes the image. All right, here are the prints and they look fantastic. Oof, I like the quality, I like the paper. It's very thick, nice matte, great colors, love it. But now I have to look for the right image. 
Now you simply take the picture and put it on top. Last chance to clean everything from dust. And you can simply put it roughly over the passepartout because it's a bit bigger than the actual passepartout and you won't see it if it's not perfectly aligned. What I take now is this simple tape you use for painting as well and I will now put it over the edges, over the corners and here in the middle parts. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, little pieces. And then it sticks perfectly to the passepartout and won't move if you put it on the wall. Now it should look something like this. You can of course also put total lines here all over the corners, but you can save yourself some time and tape by just doing it like this. Now I take that little white paper, put it here as kind of a protection over it. And now comes the wooden back part. And now you have to take care where top and bottom is because when you want to hang it on this little metal piece here, then you want to have it the right way up or down. Because I don't use it, it's not important for me. I will later just have the screw here on that frame. But if you use it, now is the moment to take care. So better have a look, right or wrong. Okay, like this. So this would be wrong, but I don't care. But yeah, for the inner monk in me, I will do it like this. All right, now it's time to bend all those little nasty things down here again. And that's a perfect job if you are two persons. If only, if one person only does that part and the other person does the framing itself, because that will save you some time. But if you are a family father, then you are lucky if your wife uh, goes out with a little one and leaves you some time to just do it for yourself and in total peace and silence. And later, when the little one is sleeping, then we can do it all together. All right, that's it. If you have a small frame, if you have a big frame, then you need to drill some screws here inside. I will show it later. But that's it for this small one. This is a frame where you need screws, tiny little screws. And I put one here already, second one here, third here, fourth here, and then it's more stable when you put it on the wall. I now took that little hand pumper here that I usually use for my camera. This is actually my own, you can get it in my shop. And I blow everything away, all the dust and all that little things here from the wood. It's a mess. we are done almost as you can see one image is missing the frame is actually there but the image is missing because I did not order it I checked my order and I did not upload it don't know forgot it now I have to order this image and I think end of the week it will be there and then we will actually see the final result but for now it's amazing took around five hours now <laughs> to frame everything. Looks amazing, doesn't it? My conclusion, I really like the result and it looks exactly as I imagined, especially the Photoshop version. 
The frames from IKEA look good from the outside, but the press board material inside crumbles when you are bending the latches and you quickly have crumbs on the statically charged plexiglass. You have to know that. Small minus, but as we say in Germany, the price is fully within the frame. <laughs> Do you guys understand this saying? Anyway, the print looks great, the paper has a nice thickness and look and feel if you want to try the whole thing for your own photos. Now after summer vacation or with photos of your children or simply your best of images. Then I have a great tip for you. With the gift code Jaworski you get a 20% discount on all photo products at www.saal-digital.com. So have fun shopping. Code Jaworski, saal-digital.com. Link is also in the description. I recommend you to take a look at the different parts of my video series that might be important for you if you want to try it for yourself. Like the order process, like the hanging part. I think there were some cool tips for you. If there are other questions that I did not answer in this video, then write it in the comments and maybe I will make an extra video in which I only answer your questions about the whole printing thing. If you need to edit your images maybe, some free presets are useful for you. You can get them at www.learnfromben.com gift. Just sign up for my newsletter and they go out automatically. See you in the next video.